Hey everybody, this is Hadrian. Thank you for watching. Let's play some more Total War Attila in our Eternal Empire series where we are finally about to attack the Sassanid Empire after paying them royalties every single freaking turn since the beginning of the series for over 20 episodes. We are going to stop wasting money on them. We're going to slowly let our relationship with them degrade while also watching to find the perfect moment to jump across the borders and take their major cities. We actually have a pretty good opportunity right now, in fact, because Tessifon is not, um, I mean, this city, this city, this city, that city. I mean, th they're, all of their border cities with us are completely vulnerable. And of course, Armenia is one of their satrapies, so we would have to move in pretty quickly and take some Armenian cities. Uh, but we could do that, and they're not too um, short up in this area right now. So I'm going to try the only thing we're waiting on is this army. This army is finishing construction. What I'm going to do while that's happening, because they've got to finish construction and move for a bit, is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to build a supply storage. It's going to take a couple of turns to build, but I'm going to try and give this army up here and just these territories or these provinces, whatever you, whatever you want to call them, the, this area, <laughs> the ability to build a... The, uh, just a source for siege equipment. Uh, so this army, for instance, without having, uh, without having to move them, I could build siege equipment for them. That's kind of what I'm thinking there. So on that note, let me also take a look around and make sure that uh, I'm maximizing my opportunities here. Yeah, that's a horse breeder. I'm going to go ahead and make this a wheat farm. Garama has pretty good public order now. If I turn on taxes, yeah, I'll get... There's actually a pretty bad food shortage in Garama, though, because we don't control the Demidi yet. But public order will still be better. Unfortunately, though, public order will go down because right now it's showing plus 10, but as soon as I let a turn go by, that food shortage, that's a major food, sort of food, blah, 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 food shortage. Words, come to me. Um, because this province is already completely infertile. So I need to... Like, that food shortage would create a huge public order issue in the next turn. So I'm going to keep taxes off. But you saw, I mean, that's an extra 2,000 income. We really need that as soon as possible. Speaking of things that we need as soon as possible, let's also have a look at Demidi here. All right, we've, we've kept them encircled. The there is, they have three turns until their main army starts to uh, starts to die. So we're gonna just we're gonna keep them siege the same way we did with Sidimus. And that should fix that problem. I'm gonna take a quick peek. Yeah, our Flavius Rufinus uh, passed away, unfortunately. We have several promotions in the works uh, that will help us get our income back up because he's no longer filling that high position that he had. Uh, but he was our kind of older brother, I think, uh, since the very beginning of the, the series. It's now 415 AD, and he has reached the end of his days. Thankfully, the emperor is still young. His son, the true heir, is almost of age. What we want to try to do as soon as we can is give the son some administrative experience so that he can begin gaining influence. All right, the Tanukids are right outside Constantinople. If they declared war on us, we would have a, a real problem. The alter they're also taking money from us because they're raiding. So uh, the Catulians really want peace. They know that we're very strong and we're right on their border. This is... Yeah, I'm nervous about the, uh, the Tanukids. I kind of want to bring my armies in and just wipe them out really quick. Okay, some of our promotions are coming through. Let's use Vettius Vetricius's influence to secure that promotion. Uh, Eutropius. This would get him additional influence. Navia Agorius Caesar. He wants to get married. Um, Eutropius has been a good character. He's been a good governor. Sure. Why not? All right, so our income has actually gone down a bit. I'm going to look through and see if there's any other positions that can be filled. 
I doubt that there are, but we need to make sure that we're doing that where we can. Hey, these guys look... Uh, for a second I thought they all looked the same, but they don't. <laughs> Alright. Um, Alright, so we've researched elite privileges. That's a huge leap forward. We now will have the ability to build the most advanced training facilities in the game. Oh, we can also go ahead and do the research that will give us access to the highest level metropolises in the game. Huh. Yeah. I'm going to research this just because we're about to be doing a lot of military activity. We're about to fight the Sassanids. So in 10 turns, we're going to have less fatigue for our armies, which will be very helpful. All right. Yeah, here's this is what the Tanu kids are doing. They've they've got two relatively large armies outside of Constantinople. And I have two relatively unadvanced armies near Constantinople. Um so yeah, it's just not a perfect situation. This spy has leveled up, so we're going to check his skills. Need to start looking at the border with the Sassanids, because we're going to make a move on them pretty soon. Yeah, I'm just going to give that guy skills as he levels up. <laughs> oh, interesting. Looks like some upgrades are available for some of these units. I don't know what they're upgrading to, but I won't complain. Just going through and making sure all of them have been completed. Looks like... Oh, there's one. Okay. So I have this army right in the right within the border of the Alexandria province that I need to bring back up. And rather than actually moving them, here's what I think I'm going to here's what I think I'm going to do. I will move this army right down to the border to where he, they could potentially be in range of our Bella in a turn. This army will move up to Amida. This army will move up to Odessa. This army will move up to Mesa. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this. And this army goes to Nova to John Abastra. Perfect. So we're now in a position to just kind of hop across the board. And my hope is that this army will, again, be in range of Arbella in the next turn. All right, so our income, once again, has gone down on account of some of the units we're building, no doubt. Once we capture Demidi, we'll be in better shape. Let's take another look at how many turns that's going to take. Oh, I didn't actually look. To Two more turns until they start to suffer attrition. So really, I need to wait about three turns before I do anything to the Demidi. Thankfully, this tiny little army is not attacking me in any way. Yeah, they have a food shortage issue in this province, so I will go ahead and build anything I can that's going to give me additional food. Looks like we almost have a food shortage issue in Sabrata as well, in Tripolitania. So, we will fix that issue. Go ahead and upgrade to a stone cutter. Hmm. Alright, I'll upgrade this to a sacred shrine in Ptolemaeus. Some of our initial uh, research buildings, or not research, some of our initial religion buildings are coming through. How expensive will it be to upgrade? Yeah, it costs 17000 to upgrade to the Praetorian compound. Uh, it's part of the mod, the Imperium Praetorium mod that I'm using for these units. So it costs a lot of money just to build the highest level recruitment facility. Uh, but we need to do that in Constantinople as soon as possible. We also have the ability to upgrade these nearby areas. So I'm going to build a statue of the divine in Tremontium to help improve um, 
Greco-Roman paganism's influence in that area. And I think that's pretty much all we have to build right now. I'll go ahead and build fields in Myra, because I know that we're going to need to be producing more food there before long. All right, let's end the turn. Our income has taken a turn for the worse. We were hanging out near the 20,000 mark, but now we are not. Which is kind of annoying, but we're going to make do. And of course, we, we're, we've we got our eyes on some cities that are going to give us some, some pretty strong advantages. I really hope the Tanukids don't give us trouble. They are outside Constantinople. I think that's probably part of the reason that we have an income issue right now is they're raiding outside Constantinople, so. What I think I need to do is I need to go ahead and upgrade these armies that I have in the Constantinople area because that entire area is woefully undefended at the moment. And I'm counting on additional conquests to kind of bring in the troop power that I need. I think what I'll do is, yeah, I'll take this unit out of Scoopy. Bring them just to Tremontium. And I'm just going to delete... Well... I'm actually... I'm not going to do that. I'm going to I'm gonna replace... Sections of the army. One bit at a time. Turn by turn. given our spy some additional abilities there. Alright, speaking of... Okay, awesome. This unit is in range of Arbella. There is now an army outside Tessaphon, but it's not a very strong one. So... None of our armies are actually in marching range of Tessaphon right now. But we could be within a turn or so. Let's take a peek across the border here and see if Dumatha... Yep, Dumatha's unguarded. I think it might be time to move on the Sassanids. I, ne I need to make this move while they're undefended. Let's do it. Alright, so we know that this is going to happen. War, my friend. So we just became unreliable because we broke a long-standing, a long-standing um, agreement with the Sassanids. We have a trade agreement with them. So we're going to move this army to Arbella and circle. I'll complete all these sieges momentarily. All right, hang on. Let's take a quick look here. Yeah, this siege is going to go to... Tosp. Okay, and circle that settlement. And then this siege is going to go to Nisibis. So yeah, we're about to take four different cities at once. The, the riskiest move we're making right now is Arbella. Because this is kind of close to some other cities that we don't have access to yet. It's close to Tessaphon. But if I keep moving in the next turn... I could potentially march on Tessaphon with, well, not that army, but probably the army from Nisibis. Yeah, that's probably what I'd do. Just march straight down this road to Tessaphon with this more advanced army. That would be the plan. But this is the first time we've actually marched on Sassanid territory, so let's go ahead and settlement. fight this battle for Dumatha. The odds are in our favor, rather overwhelmingly. But this is our first battle against the Sassanids, and I don't want to skip it. I don't want to uh, sell it short. It's a big deal. We have been paying money to these guys since the beginning of the series, and we are about to deal them a major blow by advancing on their territory. 
and taking their capital if we're lucky enough in the next turn or two. Lower quality infantry make great targets for the enemy to waste their missiles on. <laughs> it's basically encouraging you to waste um, weaker units. Okay, so here's the city we're about to invade. How do I want to do this? Do I, do I want to chill back like I have in the past, kind of put my units in this area and let the enemy come to me? I could totally do that, and it would be over pretty quickly. Or do we want to actually march into the city and make bad things happen? Let's march into the city. It'd be more fun. So let me move my units back here so that I have a bit of a better view of what I need to do. We'll have all of our catapults here. And we'll have flaming rounds so that that'll affect their morale. Alright, we want to have two contingents marching into town. This one. And this one. There is, of course, not a defensive force in the town. Good. Just want to make sure I had the right swordsman selected. Alright. What I'm going to do is actually split up the archers as well to where there are archers behind each of these units. So as I march them in, I can pause the entire units and the archers can be in the back firing on whatever units are in front. And then of course, as usual, I'm gonna have a group of cavalry ready to chase them in. The, the general will actually be, let's have him back here with the artillery. And then we'll have a second selection group over here ready to march in or charge in behind this group. Start the battle. So their main units look like they have split up to counter our approach a little bit here, which is fine. Let's do a formation group with those units and a formation group with those units. So three and four, basically. So we've got our artillery. It's going to do some damage to them. And it, ooh. And by do some damage, I mean do a lot of damage <laughs> in advance. They're not going to be firing for too long, but having them fire on any units that try to advance will be important. They are actually, they are actually trying to move on my units, which is funny. All right, we're going to have our artillery fire on their general and see if we can kill them. See if we can finish off that the Lachmid Scout Cavalry. They are losing decisively. Good. Their general is stationary, which is fantastic. Team three, go ahead and halt so the archers can fire. That, that general really shouldn't have stopped, because now this artillery is gonna land all over him. Yep. They've pulled their army back from this entrance, so this army here is just able to march straight in pretty much uncontested. That's team four, right? Tell you what, let's go ahead and position them there and we'll have them rush in. Our cavalry have gotten a little carried away. Interesting, they have actually decided to march some of their units in this direction. Okay, good, they turned around. That's the smart move.
All right, their first tower is about to come down. Our main unit has arrived here. And then what I'm going to do, as soon as that tower comes down, the enemy's tower has been destroyed. I'm going to have those units come over there. Our artillery is doing their job. We have an artillery unit that abandoned their onagers. That's kind of annoying. And now they're, they're in melee. All right, let's get our general back away from this situation. They did a pretty good job of kind of getting to our catapults, unfortunately. I was trying that split approach, which is not what I normally do, you know. Let's go ahead and stop with the artillery. <laughs> the battle is turning in our favor, so the game says. I'm going to bring as many units as I can to bear on this situation over here. Enemy general's dead. Good. And they are in flight. That was a bit of a death blow. So they must still have a unit. No, they don't. They're done. All right. That's the end of that battle. That was a little bit more protracted than I thought it would be. But we only lost 104 men. A little bit less than 10%. That will recover pretty quickly. And Dumatha belongs to us. At your command. Ready for battle. This army has leveled up. Anisius Lurko also. Uh, his army has leveled up. This army in Amesa actually isn't doing anything. I need to have them in position to march on Tessaphon in the next turn. So I'm going to have them come down here and be ready to do some damage. You have further orders. All right, same thing in our Bella. <laughs> We're going to complete all these real quick before the end of the episode, just so that we can have this territory ready for battle. in our hands. Nisibis. I think Nesibis is actually in one of our provinces, so we're taking full control of a province by doing this. Let's have a look. Commander. Yeah. Edessa and Amida have been in our territory this whole time. So by taking control of Nesibis, we actually have full control of that province for the first time, which will help us. All right, we've also taken this first Armenian town. And if the Sassanids are not able to react fast enough, then we will... Commander. That was awesome. All right. If the Sassanids are not able to react fast enough, then we will be able to take their capital in the very next turn. So that was great. Let's go ahead and look through some of the promotions that are available to me. Just gave them a morale bonus versus Eastern Empires. Shouldn't need to explain why that's an important thing to have right now. Commander. And it looks like all that's done now. I should also have the ability to promote some people now. Because I just involved a lot of generals in battles. Yep. New military counts. I just involved a bunch of generals in battles that have never actually fought before. They've been hanging out on my borders for this entire time. All right, so we need to repair as much as we can from what we just sacked so that public order improves 
in the next turn. It looks like we're going to be able to afford it, too. So that's good news. So we're going to repair all this. And we still have... Our income is way down. Way down. I'm not even sure why. Um, that's a staggering income drop. So we're going to keep... When we take Dimitty, we'll have control of a gemstone source. So that's a good thing. And also, public order is about to improve down here in um, Sahara. But, you know, we, we don't really have... Hmm. Yeah, I, I need to turn taxes on now. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait one more turn, though. Um, the extra taxes really would help next turn. But... Ready for battle. Need to wait. So, income-wise... Let's see what else I can build in order to boost these things up a bit. We'll build a local industry in Iconium. We'll upgrade the stone cutter in Nicomedia. And that will be all of our income. And that will also be it for the episode. So look at what we just accomplished. These were our borders a second ago. Now we control all this in one fell swoop. And let's see how the, the Sassanids are ranking in strength. They are still the second strongest empire. Their attitude towards us is not even that terrible yet. <laughs> we can't trade with the Hispanians. That would be great if we could trade with anyone right now. Yeah, we don't have access to any new trade agreements. So actually, yeah, that's why our income went down is we've, we've declared war on the Sassanids. So we've lost that trade agreement, that very lucrative trade agreement. So we basically need to rebuild this territory as quickly as possible so that we can have that income for ourselves to replace the income that we lost from trading with them. So yeah, that's going to be a focus uh, as much as possible in the coming episodes. So thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I upload new episodes in Eternal Empire every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, and comments are always welcome. I'll see you guys next episode.